This is the problem with the so-called intensive wrestling camp model. It's all based on running and everything's built on hitting that 15 mile run at the end of the end of the camp. The truth is this, and this was on the Joe Rogan experience, it was pretty cool. A guy talks about, you know, um, training smart and actually just training for skill. And he talks about the Russian wrestling, the wrestlers who they just sweeped every weight class in the toughest wrestling tournament in the world. Um, well, they were about to, I'm lying, I didn't check the results. But they were like one or two matches away from sweeping every weight class. And he said this, he goes, when an American beats a Russian, it's usually an American prodigy who's just some kind of an athletic freak. And I'm not saying this is always the case. This was on Joe Rogan, but it kind of made sense. He said, a Russian will win, the, will win the world title or the Olympics, and no one even knows who the hell the guy is. They're like, we never heard of this guy. I, I heard years ago from a former Team USA coach, he said, it's estimated that there may be as many as 50 Russians in every weight class that can win an Olympic medal or title. Most of them you'll never hear about because they'll never make the team. So the way they train, because they trained at Oklahoma State, someone I was there and I would get there early and watch, it's all technique driven. And that's the reason I'm so big on becoming a technical wrestler. When I was a kid, my brother and I would literally fist fight. Right? Sometimes we were crazy. Sometimes we'd be wrestling at 11.30 at night. My mom would run down because my dad, he wasn't going to get out of bed. Especially if he was like, let me fight. I ain't dealing with this. I got to iron work in the morning. Right? But, so we basically got to where we just quit live wrestling. We would go months without live wrestling. But we, we started to get really, really good. We are like 12, 13, 14. I mean, I'm talking pretty good. And so we developed a, a, a mindset. We said, we're dangerous. Tony and Tony said Nick we're dangerous man we're the most dangerous wrestlers in America and we became dangerous that was our mantra was to become dangerous technically and then when I got to Oklahoma State all right and in high school my brother was ranked number two in the nation his senior year I was ranked number one we both won junior nationals in, in Greco a couple of times met the finals the, the first brothers ever to do that and um we're placed in the freestyle side of it. And then once we got into uh, at Oklahoma State, we really learned how to leg attack and kind of fell into the freestyle side of it and went on and uh, did well. I was all American, he was the NCAA champ. But the bottom line is when I got to Oklahoma State, it was pretty much the same approach. Technique, 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 technique. And when I went to Oklahoma State, my son had a college visit there a couple of years ago. The practice was freaking so technical. It was technically mind blowing, right? And afterwards, one of the assistants was like, what do you think about that practice? Like, it was freaking mind blowing. I was like, I wanted to get a video of my phone out and start videoing it, but I didn't want to look like a little punk, you know? He's like, oh no, you could have. Because John Smith was going over such little intricate strategies for kicking out. Like when your opponent's about to pick up a single leg, when do you turn and kick out? How do you point your toe? Where are you looking? How does your shoulders rotate? And how do you land? I mean, it was mesmerizing, the technique. And I got to spar with this Russian a long time ago. He was on the Russian national team. And actually, we had a Russian coach, a, a Soviet Union defect back when I was in middle school. He ended up in St. Louis. They were Jewish. And uh, he got to he got a pretty much free reign to travel because he was kind of a famous coach. and. Uh, his family and him had a vacation in France, which was really just a ploy. They went to the U.S. Embassy and they escaped because, you know, there was, um, uh, they were being persecuted there. Marlon Kaiken. So he trained me and my brother privately. He loved us. Did it for free. He goes, I want to train you guys. Uh, well, he couldn't really talk, all right, very well. Uh, English, he was very broken English. But so he trained us for about six months and then he, you know, had a job opportunity in New York and left. It was ter terrible for us. But, so I've been around the this, this Soviet kind of Russian thing since I was in middle school. But So when I watch the Russians train at Oklahoma State, for, they'd be there like a week at a time. I'd sit and watch. Um, they train differently. It's very technical. Uh, Oklahoma State was already like that. They're known as being extremely technical wrestlers, right? And um, John Smith took it to a new level. John used to tell us, if you can't keep me off your left leg, you can't beat me. He's like, it doesn't matter how bad you want it. It's not going to happen. So guys, 
gets your skills. He used to tell us this. You think you have a great single leg or high crotch? Guess what? You you have to go go grab the uh, World Cup silver medalist. Go grab the two-time NCAA champion. Go grab the Olympic bronze medalist. Grab an Olympic champ. There were two in the wrestling room. Grab that three-time All-American over there. And you tell them, I'm going to hit a high crotch on your right leg. Or I'm going to hit a fireman's carry on your left leg. And then during live wrestling for 10 minutes, hit them four or five times. And they know it's coming. Then you have a great single leg. Until then, shut up and get back to drilling. And that's the approach. And I just loved it because I lived it as a kid just due to me and my brother fighting. And just we haphazardly fell into the fact that wrestling got so easy. I'm like, dude, this wrestling is so easy. We used to, you know, tech our way to the Fargo finals and stuff. We pinned or teched everybody our last two years of high school. Except for one kid. That was me versus Sammy Henson. Right? And I won, but... It was a tight match, obviously. He was a Fargo champ, too. But other than that, me and Tony teched or pinned our whole way through high school, our last two years. And I'm not bragging. Wrestling was way easy back then. But it was all because of our technique and drill time. And then when I got to Oklahoma State, it was so freaking awesome. Because they were on the same path as me and my brother, Ron, that the Soviet coach had us on. Uh, the Oklahoma State was already on that path. So we slid into that. And I just loved it, right? And so now here I am as a, a, a camp in the, in the camp business and the, the, the wrestling academy. That's all I do. I have not had a real job in 20 years since 1999. I quit everything, started coaching wrestling. Boom, it took off. Our kids started ring, uh, winning. And when your kids ring your phone, when your kids win, your phone rings. It's very simple. Now we have a 17,000 square foot training center. Our, our videos are up on about that if you wanted to see. Our camps are technique intensive camps. We don't do, we have a no running guarantee. I would not spend $2,900 sending my kids to a 28 day camp so they can run 15 miles. I'll tell you what, we invite the parents to come watch the last practice session of our wrestling camp. And we put them through the entire camp right before their eyes. Now that's on the five or 10 day camps. 14 day dream season camp and the 28 day challenge 28 20 000 rep camp we can't put them through the entire camp we'll, we'll put them through about 40 percent of it standing against the wall calling out drills with our arms crossed across our chest military style calling out drills your kids will drill every technique for one minute 10 seconds i blow the whistle number two go boom good number one man i'm gonna hook throw by go right i'll just call out drills we do that for an hour and 20 minutes straight I've had three moms cry because the improvement so, is so amazing. That's hard. That's a hard camp. If all I had to do was, uh, you know, run run dual meets like this, uh, what I call silly, the dual meet camps. You spend $400 to get dual meets. I had a college coach one time say, Nick, camps are awesome now. They're, they're, they're dual meet camps, right? All I gotta do is give my guys a wristbands and a whistle and a stopwatch. We drill for an hour in the morning, it's real basic, and then we do dual meets all day. Well, the, the, the so-called intensive camps are the same. Hard, heavy lifting, sprinting in the morning, uh, hard, sloppy live wrestling, push-ups till someone cries, squat thrust till someone pukes, rah, 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 right? Your kids are not getting better at wrestling. So our philosophy is this. And, you know, talking about the competition side of it, we have a competition camp. So I think competition is important, but half of it is very technical drill time. Extremely technical. And the parents are allowed to watch the last practice of that camp, too, because I want to show them that we're, we're developing skilled athletes. And now when you see um, the whole sport of college wrestling changing to where it's the technical wrestlers who are, who are winning, they're dangerous. So if you want to go to an intensive wrestling camp, go to any camp you want, right? Our camps have filled almost every year for 16 years. Who knows? I may be uh, out of business in a month. You never know. Life's like that. But we're probably going to fill up anyway. So choose the camp you want. But I would really think seriously about the technique intensive camp model. Because your kids have to be skilled. Just like the Russians who... 
a, a no-name wrestler will win the Olympics, right? Because why? Because the way they train is for skill development. So if you're looking for an intensive camp model, don't just send some your kids somewhere where they can get beat up by some college punk screaming at them at six in the morning. Send them somewhere where they're gonna hit 20,000 repetitions. That's hard. Anybody can run upright in a basketball stance 15 miles. Hell, I went like six months without running. I ran 10 miles and I didn't even think about it. My, my ankles were a little sore the next day. It wasn't a big deal, right? These kids can run 15 miles easy. But can your kids drill uh, 5,000 reps? You stay in a wrestling stance and you're drilling 5,000 leg attacks? That's way harder. So really, I think the technique intensive camp model is better. I'm talking about my camp, obviously. There's no one else out there that's doing it. Probably be some uh, people trying at some point in time. But the whole deal is this. If you get your kids skilled and dangerous on the wrestling mat, their confidence will soar. Their wrestling will soar. They're going to be dragging you to practice. If they're just getting beat up, if you're at a, you know, if you're somebody, and I probably did a little bit of this too out of, out of high school. Uh, actually, I did it. The Tommy Tough guy practices, just beat him up. No, don't quit doing that, guys. You call, you coaches out there, you young guys, quit, quit turning into Tommy Tough guy now that your wrestling career is over. All right, sure, have a hard practice. Sure, be disciplined. Sure, be tough on these guys. You don't have to beat them up. It shouldn't be army boot camp every day, right? How about this? If I get your arm behind your back against your will and I turn you over for a five count, that's powerful. If I can run up and down the bleachers more than you, who gives a shit, right? If you can't keep me off your left leg, you can't beat me. This sport is very simple, guys. That's what John said, and it's true, and I've lived it since I was 11 years old, sort of by accident, reinforced by the Soviet coach, reinforced 100 times when I was at Oklahoma State, and now in 2019, you'll see, um, well, obviously the Russians have been dominating everything forever, but you'll see the, the colleges who are dominating at the college level. These guys are crazy skilled, all right? So get your kids skill intensive not army boot camp running intensive through it's a waste of time guys i like to say if i sent my kids to cross country camp and they had to wrestle i would be mad if i spend 2500 bucks or a thousand bucks or even a 500 dollars on a five-day camp if i sent them to a five-day cross country camp and they had to wrestle all day i would be mad but you know no one gets mad you send them to a 14 day or 28 day wrestling camp and all they do is run? And you're like, dude, this is wrestling camp and all my kid did is run. We have a no running guarantee. We won't run, we won't do one push up. All right? they call them punishment push ups. My, me and my coaches are such amazing classroom managers that we think doing punishment push ups is a sign of weakness. We don't do it. I've never done it in 20 years because I want, I, our, the kids' feet just do not stop moving and they, they get so excited. They're like in a flow state. My like, gosh, this is so great. I'm getting better. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm getting better. And they, they love working hard because they're actually getting better. So if you're interested in, a, in an intensive camp, you do what works for you and your son because there's a fifty dollars to $100,000 college wrestling scholarship on the line. You do whatever you need to do to get that hundred thousand dollar scholarship I would like to encourage you to consider our 14 day or even our five or ten day camp options or a 14 day dream season camp or 28 day camp because what we do is this how do I how do I earn a college national title or all-american trophy we have that spread across the practice plan drill it 900 times, invite the parents to come watch the final practice, boom, that's it. Good luck, well, however you decide to, to go, I would at least like to, now your mind is opened up and you're pulled away from the, 
I guess it's called old school, right? The old school approach never worked, right? All my old school trained teammates, I wouldn't even practice with them. They were so terrible, right? They didn't even go to college wrestling because no one wanted them because they were old school, right? No, get, learn to become technically dangerous and skilled so you can actually win at the high level and you can actually get a college wrestling scholarship. Or what happens is that some of the old school timey tough guy kids, not that you don't have to be tough because you do, duh, right? You have to, you have to work hard to get a master's degree, duh. If you want six packs abs, you have to work hard in the gym, duh, right? So let's not state the obvious here. Yes, we have to work hard. Yes, we have to be in shape. Duh, we know that. I mean, come on, right? But what happens is some of those guys who maybe win a state title, maybe not, they're just good, tough, mean kids, they're recruited for those 10% scholarships as a workout partner. And that's the problem is this, right? College wrestling, a lot of it nowadays comes down to individuals. There's four coaches, they do individuals every morning with two guys, you know, uh, two partners come in. So, you know, four coaches, you know, they can have there's eight starters taken care of by 11.30 a.m. Two more starters come in with another other coach. So the starters are getting individual practices in the morning for two and a half hours. Then they all come in for live wrestling and some quick conditioning and weightlifting at night. If your kids aren't on the radar to be starting and wearing that varsity singlet, they're not gonna get those individual morning practices. I've had kids not do it, right? So even when you are extremely skilled, you still have to be off the charts skilled so that you get those individuals because you're gonna get passed up. They all, in all cases, the kids who make it to college wrestling, just because they're tough and they wrestled 10 years and they cut 15 pounds and they're strong, they're great athletes, they get, they get recruited for 10%, maybe 5% scholarship to these division one schools with a chance to earn more, right? That's always a phrase. You get 10% scholarship with a chance to earn more. You're not gonna ever earn more because you're not gonna get the individual practices. You're gonna be thrown in there with the workout partners. You're gonna rest an hour and 20 minutes a night and you're gonna get ignored. Get skilled or you're gonna get left behind. That's the bottom line. Good luck. You can check us out if interested at ProLearWrestling.com. We're launching the world's first online wrestling academy. Uh, it's January 20, January 30th. It should be up live tonight. Good luck.